plan B because the reality for most filmmakers this is what they're going to end up doing and I'm advising or re recommending to a lot of filmmakers at least have the full range of your options thought out. You should still try to go to Sundance and hope you're the big sick but also realize that the odds are he very heavily stacked against you. I don't know how many thousands and thousands of feature films are made every year and there's like one in the following dynamite or big sick every decade. So to make that the entirety of your plan, I think, is pretty foolish, and the the rest of the landscape is constantly shifting, and there's all these confusing terms that I'm only starting to understand, like TVOD and SVOD and AVOD. So, sure. I think I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Okay, so um, video on demand. I'm sure everyone's heard the term. Has different subcomponents, and um, typically we will, or most companies will, window them. Um, and they'll start with transactional. So transactional is, um, I think the, the typical example would be iTunes, where you have to actually pay to rent or buy something. Everyone's familiar with that. Um, there's also cable video on demand. So um, if you're watching Comcast, Cox, or Charter, then you can um, view something via pay-per-view or on demand through your cable company. That's also falls under the transactional um, segment of VOD, and then after that, um, SVOD. So this is obviously a subscription service. Um, your primary example of this would be a Netflix, where you're paying your monthly $8 or $11, whatever is it. And then there's these platforms that are kind of a hybrid of both. Amazon Prime, perfect example. Um, if you have Amazon subscription, you can stream all of their content for free with your Prime service or some content may only be available to download to rent or download to own. Um, and then lastly, there's the advertising space. So um, before Hulu switched their model more to the Netflix side, they were um, playing ads, and that was their free version. Um, and then on the other side of that, there were a subscription model as well. So you could opt in to pay $8 a month and watch content with no ads, or you could watch for free with ads. Um, Right now, you have Netflix, Amazon, and Hulu. Those are kind of the big three, if you will. Um, since Hulu moved out of the advertising space, there's a few other platforms, uh, namely Pluto, uh, Voodoo, which is owned by Walmart, and uh, Tubi TV. Those are like the three big ad platforms. And so, um, you know, through various stages, like when we when we take on a film, sometimes it doesn't make sense to to, to go the transactional route first and hold back APOD and SPOD um, because you know, if you don't have um, a film with a big cast or something that you know most folks will take out their wallet and pay $10 to watch, then it really doesn't make much sense to, to wait to open it up to be um, available to view for free either through advertising or subscription. And in my experience of doing this for you know, six years just in the digital space, um, and thousands of movies, the, the transactional usually accounts for less than 5% of all revenue. So typically, um, what we'll do, unless there's a cast or it's a very new film, we'll take it to the subscription, transactional, and advertising all at once and just get the most exposure for the film as we can. Um, another thing being, you know, each platform usually has a separate demographic. People who are streaming on Amazon might not be streaming on Tubi or Pluto, so you're not cannibalizing your film usually by getting out, get out into as many places that you can, and and actually by you know having the most exposure, you're you're getting the most eyeballs, and I think you're maximizing revenue by putting it in as many places as you can um, just to start, which can be used as great leverage going forward with your next film. What about where does the categories of like Sundance? Um, and uh, say Criterion, where do they fall in that mix? Are they just curated? And um, uh, because they are a subscription or you can join them, correct? Sure, sure. Um, they're heavily curated. And usually those companies will have um, something that's like an add-on channel. So um, within Amazon, you can create a separate SVOD where along with your Prime subscription, you can watch, say, Criterion or I mean, HBO has a channel too. So for another five, ten dollars a month, mm -hmm. then you have access to all of these films with like Sundance criteria. And everybody's kind of joining that area as well. 
and they have those different platforms, they have to go shopping as well to see who's going to carry them. Exactly. Yeah, and, and companies like ours, we distribute to them as well. 